All right, back out in the garage today. Uh, today's April 6th. Uh, we're finally getting a halfway decent day out there. Uh, it's about 60 almost. Sun's not really out, but we'll take it since it actually snowed yesterday. Uh, today I'm going to be working on some sandblasting, uh, hopefully. Um, that's the parts there I want to get accomplished today. Um, but also it's going to be a, uh, a mixed uh, video. It's also going to be on... Uh, I'm going to do a review on the Harbor Freight 40 pound uh, pressurized sandblaster. Um, I picked that up today. I used to do it, where's my five gallon bucket? Used to do it the old fashioned way. I got a siphon type uh, sandblaster. I just stick it inside the five gallon bucket of sandblast and sand. And it's done all right for me in the past, but it's time consuming. And I'm hoping this pressurized one's gonna, gonna be a lot better. So we'll find out together. Um, to give you an idea on price, uh, they typically go for about 150 bucks online. Harbor Freight sells them for $109. Um, I used a 20% off coupon today, so with tax and everything, came to $95.03 with the tax. Uh, basically, it came down from $109 to $87.99, so that wasn't too bad. And actually, they threw this guy in. If you spend so much money today, you get a free $4 light. It's got a magnet and a little hook there. What do you want for free? Um, so... That's where we're at. I'm going to head outside and start uh, taking the sandblaster out of the box. All right, I'm part way through the assembly here, um, and so far it's it's not too bad as far as assembly is concerned. Had to put the two wheels on. Uh, that was literally a few seconds. Um, you slide the wheels on, put the cotter key in, you're done. Uh, you got to put that foot on. Uh, that's just a cotter key. A couple seconds. Uh, we're gonna have to put the gauge on. That's just some extra nozzles. They give you different sizes. You get a hood with it. You get a funnel with it, and that's the main hose there. Um, but one thing I just wanted to point out, I tightened this up a little bit already. Um, this water separator valve setup here actually comes pre-assembled, which I'm surprised. I, I would say that's a plus. Uh, normally you would find them in a box and you'd have to read seven pages of directions to try to figure out how to put it together. But uh, they actually put it together for you. But <clears throat> this was, uh, everything was pretty loose. Uh, so I snugged everything up. They definitely used way too much Teflon tape. Um, you can see that, you know, there is a such thing as too much Teflon tape. And uh, that's too much Teflon tape, but uh, I tightened everything up. It's, it's a lot better now, but just keep an eye on that when you unbox yours. If you end up getting one of these, uh, those bolts are a little loose. But again, that was pre-assembled from the factory, so tightening them up is not a big deal. I'm kind of glad that they were on there to, to begin with. Every little bit helped. So I'm going to put this gauge on and uh, pretty much be ready to go. Okay, well, I'll finish with the assembly. Uh, overall, not bad uh, to do. Uh, the wheels, like I said, uh, you pop them out. A couple washers, a couple cotter pins, you're done. Uh, this foot, it's just a cotter pin holds that in. Um, the water separator uh, and the valves come pre-assembled. Um, but I think I pointed out before they, they went a little crazy with the Teflon tape. And things were a little loose, but I tightened everything up. I didn't disassemble it and retighten it, but I tightened it up in place and it seems okay. I guess I'll know once I, I put pressure to it. Um, the other assembly part, you just got to put your gauge in, put some Teflon tape on that, tighten that up. 
and then your main hose here uh, gets attached down there and that's just a hose clamp uh, so that was pretty straightforward uh, make sure you tighten everything up on here uh, this was a little loose but it, you know again it came from the factory I like that it doesn't surprise me but you're gonna have this in your hand at a hundred psi or better so you want to make sure that's tight obviously um, but yeah so overall the assembly uh, a zero being a real pain and a 10 being a piece of cake um, I would honestly give it a give it an eight uh, I want to say I got 15 minutes into the whole thing putting it together um, yeah you could call it 20 minutes if you want to the time you unboxed it and everything uh, the other thing with the assembly and I didn't notice at first is these handles are facing this way when you get it they are pre-assembled but that's why they didn't tighten these because you actually got to turn them around and that's Obviously, because when they were facing in, that saves about six inches of packing material. That box would have to be six inches taller. And when they ship this stuff in, it's all about how much they can squeeze on a shipping container. So you got to turn them around. wasn't a big deal, four bolts. But uh, yeah, so an eight out of ten on the assembly. Uh, so far, so good. All right, I'm getting ready to start the sandblasting now. Um, got about 115 psi coming to the tank. Um, it's getting a little windy out right now, so I'll try to keep it where you guys can hear me, but it uh, keeps kicking up every once in a while. But anyhow, we're all set here. I'm just getting the valves opened up. I uh, got the main valve open. Uh, this is the valve here that's going to feed the tank. All right, and then you got the valve on the bottom there. I don't know why they have so many valves, but... All right, so now we should have uh, air going to the to the nozzle, and of course the nozzle has its has its own valve. Um, I just want to show you real quick what I'm using for a compressor. Might be a smidge undersized for this, but uh, I don't think so. Not 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 by a lot anyway. It's a 26 gallon, and uh, there's the readings on it. But uh, again, I've got about 100. And 15 psi going out so I'm gonna see what this thing can do uh, here's a safety gear that I'm gonna be wearing that's the hood that came with it I may try it out but this is an old hood of mine um, I cut the uh, the shield out of it because it was couldn't see out of it anymore but I like to wear that just so the sand don't go down my neck and then I actually just wear this face shield uh, so I'm gonna start with that and I might give that a, a try later but they usually fog up Okay, um, I've been using this for about an hour now, um, and uh, I want to give this a fair review. Um, so a couple things. Uh, number one, you definitely got to have a compressor that can keep up. Uh, so I want to be, be fair and say that when I have this gauge at 115 PSI, um, it does a pretty good job. Uh, the compressor obviously can't keep up, it's, it doesn't have a big enough tank. Uh, but it's got some other issues too. Uh, it tends to want to clog at this valve here. I had to take that apart a couple times and, and clear it out. Um, and also something that is uh, not at fault of the sandblaster itself is I had to clean the nozzle out a couple times. I try to keep my media pretty clean, but you can see how I do this here. I'm outside and I got this cardboard surround so I can kind of keep the sand uh, contained, but you can see the debris that gets in it. So definitely filter your um, your sand 
when you uh, reuse it because uh, I actually pulled out a couple little pieces of wood out of the tip. So that's at no fault of the sandblaster. Um, but anyhow, I got this at 115 PSI right now, so I just want to show you real quick what it can do. So that's what it'll do when the pressure's correct. It actually does a pretty good job. Um, you can see the compressor started already in I'm at about 90 PSI. It actually went down to about 80 in that short period of time. Um, so compressor is very important. I have a bigger compressor in the shop, uh, but it's not hooked up yet. So I'm going to give this the benefit of the doubt for now. Uh, but uh, I'm going to keep plugging away at this. It's a little bit slow because I got to keep waiting for the compressor but uh, I'd like to get a few pieces done today. And uh, that right there is why you screen your media. Um, of course, I picked a horrible day. It's windy out and it's early spring, so stuff's flying all over the place, but that all would have been mixed in with the media and it would have been getting plugged up every couple seconds. So these old screens work good if you got one kicking around. It's like the perfect size. Uh, the media still goes through, obviously, and collects all that junk. All right, there's all the parts I sandblasted today uh, with the Harbor Freight Sandblaster. Uh, everything came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. Um, you know, there's little nooks and crannies I got to get still. I'll use a uh, scotch Brite pad and go over these a little bit. After that, I'll uh, clean them up with the denatured alcohol and then uh, be ready for primer. And then we'll be ready for some paint and see how they come out. And uh, I'm going to finish up uh, my overall review on the Harbor Freight Sandblaster. Okay, um, I'm wrapping up the review on the Harbor Freight 40-pound uh, uh, blaster. Um, overall, it, it, it performed pretty good. Um, it started off really good. Um, I was actually impressed with it uh, at the beginning. Uh, but then I did have some issues along the way uh, that I had to kind of play around with and get a feel for it um one of the main things that was happening is down here uh it got plugged up down there a couple times that's basically where the um material comes out and the air mixes uh, i'll call it a mixing valve uh it got plugged up there a couple times so i had to take the clamp off stick something in there clean it out and uh my uh abrasive material was I've only used it a couple other times and it was pretty clean and it's definitely the, the right stuff that they recommend for it. So I couldn't really blame it on the uh, uh, the media. So that was one issue. Uh, the compressor I had is just barely big enough for it. Maybe even a little bit on the small side like I said earlier. I do have a full size compressor over there. It's just not hooked up yet. So, you know, I'll blame a little bit on the uh, air compressor because I want to be fair. But uh, even when I had a full 115 PSI, um, it still got clogged up on me a couple times. And what I found was it's got valves everywhere, which in a way is nice, but in, in other ways it's kind of a pain in the neck. But uh, that's the air valve. Um, I pretty much found that that's got to be open 100%. And the valve down here... Um, I kind of tweaked that a little bit. I opened it up like three quarters of the way and that seemed to help. But, um, but yeah, so it got clogged there. Uh, the other issue I had, um, all these valves they put on here are brass. Um, brass is soft, so it doesn't surprise me that this happened. But that's the valve that was on, was on the end of here. And I actually, I, I took it off and just hooked it up direct uh, so I can finish what I had to do. But I don't know if you can see that, but it literally, the sandblast material blew a hole right through the side of it. Um, you know, and that, that was sandblasting for a good hour and a half, so but you shouldn't, shouldn't burn up a brand new valve that quick. But uh, again, it's brass. You know, they, they probably should be stainless steel. Um, but for, for 90 bucks, you know, it, it, it is what it is. So it, I, I have some ideas for 
maybe doing something a little bit different down here so that I don't get plugged up. Um, at some points it was blasting really good and it was knocking the paint off like no tomorrow and other times it would kind of blast out too much media um, and then other times it was just straight air and, and, and no media. So, you know, again, I had to play with it a little bit. So overall, you know, uh, is, you know, zero through ten, zero being, you know, no good at all, and and ten being, you know, the best sand blaster ever. Uh, I'd give it a six. Um, like I said, I I, I want to try a couple things on it to try to make it better. Uh, one thing I want to do is uh, get a, a dead man uh, trigger for this. So. You know, when you want to blast, you just push it. You know, when you let off on it, it turns off. That'll be be a lot better, especially now that I don't have the valve anymore. The thing with this valve was even before it blew a hole in it, you know, you got to open and close it. It got to be a little bit of a pain in the neck. But, uh, yeah, I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Uh, you know, for the price, you know, I, I would I would definitely recommend it. Um, you know, don't expect miracles out of the box. Uh, definitely takes a little getting used to. But, uh, yeah, so that, that's it in a nutshell. Um, you know, definitely was a lot better than, uh, the old way I used to do it with a five gallon bucket. Um, so that's it.